Yes, it's in fact it happened. I mean, uh, the, the I had a colleague in uh, in uh, somewhere in Sweden. He wa he was he was a writer, but he worked for or something else. But he worked as a librarian for one summer when he was young, and uh, people didn't borrow Bos Dostoevsky's book there, so he, he just put this little yellow dot on the back of the book, which which is a sign for this is a crime <laughs> story. <laughs> and and people there in this small town in Sweden they started reading Dostoevsky, and they thought he was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> So well, as, yeah, sorry. You, I mean, you, you can use, you can use, put crime fiction and it sells better. And, and, and but I mean, of course, Dostoevsky, it is a crime yeah. story. I mean, and yeah. crime and punishment yeah. and, and, and uh, yeah. the brothers whatever. Karamazov. Bro Karamazov, for sure. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a detective story without a detective yeah. and a surprise twist of, uh, you know, the, 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 the least suspected mm -hmm. uh, person turns out to be guilty only too soon. Not at the end, but yeah. quite yeah. early in the book. But uh, then, of course, Dostoevsky wrote pot boilers, yeah. but he was such a great writer, so he couldn't write anything bad. But he d had to write to, to, to um, you know, for salt in his soup. Yeah. 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 And to, to, and also to, uh, to, to, to reach out to a popular audience. So many people had to buy and read yeah. his books. So, um, but that was before crime fiction became a defined genre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you, I mean, when you first started writing, I mean, uh, was it to, I mean, did you start off writing crime fiction? Did you sort of go into it? Can you just give us a... Well, my, in my case, my first story was, uh, it was a kind of a very philosophical, very bright, uh, existentialistic love story. Okay. Selling worldwide 25 or 75 copies. Uh, <laughs> Less than a hundred, anyway. It was a good book, got good reviews, yeah. read by my friends, relatives, etc. Right. Uh, but since it wasn't a crime story, it didn't sell. <laughs> and then my second one was a, and at that time, this is the early 90s. At that time, there was no such thing as a Swedish crime boom. Right. So, uh, but I had a story that I I could only tell it as as, as a crime novel. It had be, to be that genre, and that sort of started me off because it was. I I think the crime genre is a good. It's a good genre for telling stories. Unfortunately, there are too many bad yeah. crime stories around. Mm. Anna Holt, a, colli a Norwegian colleague of mine, she, 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 she used to say that there is nothing as bad as a bad crime story, yeah. but there is nothing as good as a good crime story. And I think she, she pinned it down mm. rather perfectly. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hamlet is yeah. a very good crime story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ibsen's plays. His contemporary plays, they are thrillers. There is always a secret from the past haunting the present, and in the end, it all comes out. And the first one is King Oedipus by, by, by Sophocles. Yep. I mean, the, this is a this is the crime drama because yep. you, he's, he's trying to solve a crime, and he himself committed that crime, and he doesn't know, and the whole audience knows it. Mm. This is terrific, and mm. of course, it's a crime story, and it's like two thousand five hundred yep. years ago. So yeah. crime was a, it was a shonger. I mean, people wrote crime before the, the, the shonger was defined, for sure. Mm. Well, mm. criminal activities are human activities, so I mean, <laughs> you've got to write about mm. it. Um, I'm just going to sort of, um, I mean, in terms of the tradition, as it were, I mean, peop I'm, I'm talking about the international readership of Nordic Noah, mm. but within that sort of super genre, there are variations, as we know. Oh, yeah. um, Niels, can you, can you just sort of um, give us an idea about, you know, the fact that it's not one same thing uh, and what are the variations in that? I mean, Hokan writes very differently from another sort of uh, Norwegian, mm. Swedish, Danish, Icelandic writer. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the term Nordic Noir is actually false in a way because uh, so much of Scandinavian or Nordic crime fiction is not noir. Yeah. Not, not by the, the usual definition of noir. Uh, uh, and some of it is, I mean, Unesco is probably a noir writer and he's been very successful, but what he's doing is taking the old fashioned, the, 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 the police novel, he has a policeman as his main character and mixing it with a thriller. So he puts in a lot of action, violence, stuff that usually are reserved for, well, uh, writers like James Elroy or, yeah. uh, uh, even Tom Clancy, uh, but then there are uh, the kind of sort of quiet domestic crime story by many women writers. They like to write about 
uh, uh, sets their stories in small communities, often local community, not the city, uh, and they are about things you are afraid of, like losing your children right. or whatever, things that might happen to upset happy family life, and usually the investigators in those books are, are a married couple. Yeah. Um, and um, then, of course, there is suspense. Uh, suspense stories, psychological thrillers with the, um, with, the, with the culprit as the main character or, or, or the potential victim. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure, for instance, your books are kind of like, I, I, I read, um, quite recently I read uh, the one called The End, Summer, mm -hmm. The Lonely Ones. Mm -hmm. And to me it is a kind of thriller, but it's also a detective story because right. it's uh, about the investigation of an old mystery. We don't even know whether it's murder. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's the story of six young people and how their lives are intertwined and what, in the first place, uh, created the situation that, that resulted in, uh, uh, in, in, in a sudden death. Right. That might be murder or might not. And that's a very interesting way, I think, to, to, to write a, a crime story. But I mean, it's the, uh, since I'm only the writer, and writing is a, it's a rather complicated process, but an analyzing your own writing is even worse. Yeah. So uh, you don't have to, to, to try to make these analysis from your own writing, but, but looking back to it, I think the, the, the only thing I try to accomplish is, is to write uh, a book. And every, every single book should be, even when it's in a series, should be a standalone. You should be able to pick any book. You don't have to start with number one, two, three, and then in the right order. So every single book has to be as good as it gets. And, and, uh, and the only thing I try to accomplish is to write a story that is so well written and so the story is so interesting that I would like to read it myself. Yeah. And then you can just hope that somebody else has the same good taste as I have or <laughs> bad taste or whatever. But I mean, and this, it works. I mean, because if you don't trust your own opinions or, 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 yeah. or judgments at a writer, it doesn't work. If I don't believe the story, if I don't like it, you won't like it either. And this works not only in Sweden, it works, I mean, a good story travels over mountains, over deserts, over yeah. time. Mm. So just trust your, this is the story I'd like to, I'd like to read. Yeah. The only problem is I have to write it before I can <laughs> read it. <Yeah. laughs> but th that's interesting because uh, it's, uh, actually it's happened uh, th throughout historical times that stories have traveled like that. Uh, uh, I, I used to study folklore at the University of Oslo and they have all these fairy tales and, and, and myths and everything and you find them all over the world, the same kind of stories like uh, um, uh, the one, one, one fairy tale or myth that I thought of as typical in Norwegian turned out to be the same as uh, an, uh, uh, another story from Japan of all right. places. Yeah, yeah. So sailors, I suppose, brought them along. They traveled the Silk Road. Tweeted a bit. Yeah. And, uh, localized and it has also to do with the fact that uh, people live under more or less similar circumstances, so they recognize themselves and the, the stories are significant to them, and so they choose to pass them on. Um, in terms of, you talk about series uh, while writing, but yet it should be standalone. Um, characters like, let's say, Inspector uh, Van Veteren. Van Veteren. Van Veteren. Yeah. So, I, uh, I mean, when does, when, when did you kind of realize that this is a character that's going to click and sort of, I mean, we've sort of grown with him yeah. in that sense. I mean, I had no intention of writing a series of ten books. Van Veteren series is a series of ten books. But yeah. when I started out with the first one, I didn't even know that anybody would, would like to publish it. So right. I did not intend it. And uh, also, I mean, I sort of, I think I developed him organically. So, yeah. so I mean, he was, I just put a man in a, yeah. in a, he's supposed to be depressed, he's old, he's disillusionized, he, mm, yeah. he drinks too much, he, he's got a broken up marriage, he's uh, whatever. Yeah. He, he's chooses, a he chews on toothpicks. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. And he's not a very sympathetic character. No, he's, he's not. He's just seen by. Uh, he's, <laughs> no, 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 he's, uh, <laughs> but I mean, he, still he's a traditional yeah. literary sleuth. I mean, yeah. of course, th these are what, what, I mean, he's like, uh, Maigret or, or, yeah. or, or yeah. Inspector Morse in Oxford. So he's traditional. I wanted to, to have him yeah. like that. So, hmm. 
Uh, but I mean, I didn't have a, the fixed, uh, and still I don't understand him really, because he's like, I got a new one. I mean, <laughs> Van Veteren is he's 10 years, 12 years older than I. So when I approached him, when I started writing about him, I had to sort of ask questions. Can I, could I write this stuff about you? And he said, no, 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 that's not me. <laughs> so I, I had this kind of, you know, <laughs> feeling that I'm writing about somebody who knows a lot more about life than I do. Right. Whereas my second uh, protagonist is called Gunnar Barbarotti, which right. is a stranger. He's a mix of Sweden and Italy. Right. He's my little brother, and I can sort of, I can handle him eas more easy than, than, than I could handle Van Vietnam. But I mean, you, you come into these kind of situations when, when, you, when you write so much about one single character. There are very much contrasts as characters because Van, Van Vetren is single, he is, you know, mm. nice old, old man who keeps himself to himself, but Barbarotti, he has, he's married, he has children. Yes, you can identify with Barbarotti. You, you probably, if you're not a very strange reader, you, you cannot identify with Van Vetren. He's too strange for anybody to, to relate to, I think. But Barbarotti is just like you and me, I think. Well, I can identify with Van Vetren in his love for books. He becomes an antiquarian yeah. bookseller. <coughs> after he has retired from the police, and I like that. Yeah. I, I'd like to, to find a shop somewhere and, and go inside. Sure, you're welcome. I mean, he's, he's still there. I mean, <laughs> he, I talk to him every month, and, and, and he says, I'm fine, I want to be, because after book number five, he stops being a police officer. Yeah. He's, a, he's an uh, antiquarian book dealer instead, and it's far better than being hunting murderers, etc. <laughs> so he stays there in this city, and he's a, uh, He's happy with it, but I'm not allowed to write any more stories about it. Yeah. He tells me that every month. <laughs> uh, Hukang, um, you, you talk about, um, you just talk about tradition in that sense. Uh, what, what, um, what were you reading in terms of uh, your craft before you really started writing? Novels. I mean, I read yeah. novels, novels. I mean, yeah. crime novels when I was a bit younger, I think. Uh, I, I, I read a lot of crime novels when, when I was in a teenager because um, a crime novel is a good sort of bridge from children's books to, to, yeah. to books for grown-ups. So I read, it, I, read, I read them all, I mean, Dashiell right. Hammett and Chandler ah. and Arthur Christie and whatever okay. when I was younger. But, I mean, these days I, I, I just write crime fiction. Uh, yeah. I don't read it okay. uh, in a way. But, I mean, this is not 100% true, but uh, <laughs> 90. Yeah. Do, you, do you find that uh, reading other, other people's novels makes it more difficult for you to create your own? I mean, if you write, if you read other crime writers' books, uh, or is it just that you... No, but you, you need somebody to steal from. Uh, yeah. They say that uh, ah, yeah. Uh, a, a bad writer, he, he just borrows, but a good writer steals. And yeah. that is what you do as a writer. I mean, mm. but you, you should steal with a, with, a, with a... Be careful, because it shouldn't be noticed. But I mean, <laughs> I realize that, that when I read something that I think is very good, I think, aha, this is a good way of telling a story. This is a very nice twist. I've used it, and you just store it, and it, it will come out like four or five years. And I, I know that every other writer does the same. You, you steal from each other. And, and we are welcome to steal from each other, I think. Uh. And I think you get more inspiration as a writer, most of us, from other books yeah. than from this thing called life. Absolutely. But I don't think it, ha I mean, as you pointed out, I don't think it has to be sort of stolen from a crime fiction book. No. You can steal it from, I don't know, I mean, you can steal it from the newspapers, you can steal it from Dostoevsky coming back again to mm. uh, a great crime fiction writer. Sure. Um, Shakespeare stole all his plots, I think. Oh, he did. Yeah. He didn't somewhere. even write them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly he wrote yeah, them, well, okay. I, I think he actually did. Yeah. 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 Holland, yeah, Sh Holland, Holland <coughs> Shed is still sort of filing a case against Shakespeare. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Plutarch yeah. is <laughs> turning in his grave. Yeah. <laughs> it took all those Romans from me. Yeah. Friends, yeah. Romans, countrymen. Uh, one of the things is. about uh, your books, Hokan, is um, the language. And I want Niels to also get into this. Mm. Um, I mean, it works completely as a novel. Uh, forget the genre for a minute. Um, and it, it, it sort of uses the genre, I think, to also sort of write beautifully. And by beautiful, I don't mean sort of floral or anything. I th th there's a certain sort of a quality that we can call spare and wry at the same time. Um, is that something, um, Niels, is that something that you um, find a sort of emblematic of let's say what we are calling, have decided to call Nordic uh, Noah, mm. 
Um, I mean, I, I, I say this because you mentioned Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler, mm -hmm. that there's a different kind of uh, writing style. Yeah, yeah. So when we talk about sort of Nordic Noah, and I, I, I've read uh, Hooker and I've read a few others, mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a sort of correlation between Scandinavian crime fiction and this kind of uh, IKEA, not in a bad way, but a kind of spare Zen-like um, sort of approach rather than this flamboyant sort of Elmo yeah. Leonard, um, yeah. L.A. Noir kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, in most, at least Norwegian, I think also Scandinavian fiction, that the writing is at a certain sort of low-key level. Um, sometimes because the, the writer isn't able to write any better. Uh, <laughs> sometimes because um, you want to stick to the idea that less is yeah, more. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, um, a, a crime novel set in present day Scandinavia can't make the, 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 the style too flourishing. Yeah. But there are exceptions. One Scandinavian, one Norwegian writer that I would recommend he has been translated, some of his books have been translated into English, is Gunnar Stolesen yes. uh, from Bergen, who writes private eye stories in the style and the vein of Raymond Chandler and Ross MacDonald. And he is also one of the best, stylistically best writers we have in Norway. He, he's actually able to write um, prose similar to Chandler's without looking, without without giving a feeling that he is copying yeah. Chandler. He's, uh, he's uh, original and at the same time he's uh, sort of, yeah, you know, American. Uh, his character, Varg Veum, is, uh, is, a, is a Norwegian relative right. of, uh, especially more Lou Archer perhaps than uh, sure. Philip Marlowe. Ah. And he, he is, is a sort of ironic grin uh, right. that he wears the trench coat of right. those uh, hard-boiled heroes from yeah. America. And Gunnar's been doing it for years and years. And uh, he's also one of the best craftsmen when it comes to plotting. Yeah. I agree completely. I mean, Gunnar Stoll, if you, if you read all your, cha your Chandler and Dessel twice, three times, you can go to the Norwegian Gunnar Stollesen because he's as good as them, for sure. I'll tell him you said that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, yeah, sorry. No, I, uh, uh, <coughs> maybe in another five minutes we're going to open this up. Mm -hmm. uh, to questions and uh, I sure. just want to ask something before we sort of open it up. I mean, in terms of, you talk about craft, for instance. I mean, um, can you ever sort of think of uh, right now sort of doing a book which is not necessarily crime related? Uh, well, I've done it. I mean, it's the, uh, I think I've written 27 or perhaps 28 books and the 10 van they are they are crime fiction. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't say that the Barbarotti series, it's sometimes it's, it's, not, yeah. it's, it's sort of a, some of them are, of course, it's, it's a kind of a crime story because there is an inspector there, but otherwise it's more like a mainstream novel. Right. There is an element of crime. Mm. And, uh, and also I've, I've, I've written 10 other books or 12 other books and they are mainstream novels with a, with a dead body in them. I mean, <laughs> it's the, uh, I usually kill somebody off. I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> I, I have a number of readers, they ask me, could you, could you ever write a book where everybody who's alive in the first chapter is also alive in the last chapter? Right. And I, I'm trying, I say, but so far I haven't succeeded. But yeah. uh, yes, I have. There is one out this summer in, uh, okay. in Sweden. It's a Berlin book. I, I've, I've, uh, I, uh, I lived in New York, uh, in London, and uh, my intention was to write a New York story, a London story, a Berlin story. And uh, the two first ones have been out. There is a New York book, there is a London book, and the third one, Berlin, 11 days in Berlin. Ah. It's out in, uh, in uh, August, I think, in Sweden. Yeah. And this is certainly not a crime story. Okay. But coming to think of it, there is somebody dying still. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> there you are. Well, there was a Norwegian writer who, he didn't cry, he write crime novels, but he wrote novels that are sort of close to crime novels. And he said that there are only two things worthy of writing of, and that's love and murder. Sure. And you combine them. Yeah. Because, I mean, love is a, is a good reason for committing murder. It's yes. a, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes murder is an act of love. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, that's an amazing way. way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we go very You're much so for that. Over we there. go into that in a way, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Let's not fight now. <laughs> uh, shouldn't we? Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, we are good friends. Swedes and Norwegians go yeah, yeah. together yeah. like quarreling siblings. <laughs> Um, 
I'm just gonna. Uh, we still have 25 minutes. Oh, we do. Yes, Excellent. Yes, yes. Okay. Excellent. I, I, I sort of lost track of time. So I'm. Uh, I mean, in terms of um, news, I, uh, the law. I mean, uh, we were talking about this earlier mm. in terms of how sort of the crime fiction genre has a correlation to how readers slash society looks at the law. Um, I mean, I, my, I, one reason I think that there's not that much of a indigenous crime fiction writing culture in India is partly because uh, we see law, the law very differently here. And sometimes uh, when the law is broken, we don't see it as broken uh, or, or wrong. Um, could you give us a background, both of you actually, uh, in terms of you know how, how um, the law or understanding jurisprudence in that sense about you know, killing people is wrong. Yeah. Uh, how does that work uh, uh, and translate into fiction? Yeah. Well, I I in no way. I, I think people, are m they are very much concerned about the law okay. and they're very much concerned about thinking that something is right and something is wrong. So uh, Norwegian crime novels and I think Scandinavian crime novels is very much about justice. And right. justice isn't always obtained by the law. Right. That's why we need crime novels to sort of put things right, because in reality we see that answers are not that clear. Sometimes the innocent uh, are punished, sometimes they, uh, the, the, the guilty ones go free. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think there's a strong tradition in the North. I mean, even the old Vikings had very strict laws, yeah. and it would yeah. apply to everybody, and they would follow them. And also, uh, in our countries, pol the police are generally regarded as good guys. Uh, sometimes incompetent, but not really corrupt or really violent or See, anything. See, that's a sort like of violent that. difference between our culture. I realize yeah, that, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, I think, uh, uh, well, uh, one of the reasons why, why crime fiction started growing in Europe, in especially in the democracies in Scandinavia, England, France, was because uh, the police was became a sort of civilian yeah. uh, uh, organization. They were there to protect the individual against um, you know, thieves, sure. murderers, and so on, not to protect the state against subversive elements. Not so much. I mean, they, they do, of yeah. course. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you, Hawkeye. No, but I mean, I, I agree completely. I mean, uh, because because I don't know about the, the, the situation in India, of course. I've only been here a week, but I mean, somebody said that such such a thing as a good cop uh, wouldn't be uh, plausible in, in, in India, no. which is sad in a way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, perhaps so that is the difference. But I mean, still, you have a lot of you have a lot of crime fiction in India. Yeah. Mm. So, who are the good guys in in, in, in the uh, in Indian crime fiction? See, I think, w uh, I mean, it's a developing thing because, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. as I was telling Niels earlier today, uh, I think there is a stage which is uh, in which India is right now going through a situation where we're acknowledging things going wrong. Earlier, it was more fatalistic, so mm. there was a lot of um, sort of escapist literature, which mm. is different from sort of going kind of social realism mold. Uh, so I think that is something, I mean, there are writers, uh, especially there are writers in the non-English uh, languages who are writing crime fiction, genre fiction. It could be, uh, you know, it could be sort of uh, horror stories, for instance, mm -hmm. there's also a genre. And I, I, I see a correlation between people actually acknowledging that uh, things are wrong, uh, to which, you know, you, you give vent to that or you give an idea to that, you give flesh to that. Way. But what is interesting, I think, to, to look at, well, Ray Chandler and, and Dashiell Hammett. Um, in, in English, in the English Golden Age detective stories, yeah. the cops were honest, they, they were blunt, and uh, they needed an amateur detective to put them right, like Lord Peter Wimsey or Hercule Poirot, yeah. and even old ladies like Miss Marple. Yeah. But uh, then, of course, Hammett and Chandler wrote from uh, another society, a society where uh, cops actually were corrupt. Yeah. They were brutal. Gangsters ruled cities. Uh, and uh, Hammett's characters, are, they are cynical in a way, but they have a code of honor that they follow. And I think his, that kind of fiction that he wrote, the hard-boiled detective yeah. story, was inspired by the fact that 
U USA at that time was more, perhaps more similar to what you have here in India. Yeah. And uh, so what do you do? You create uh, an individual who operate without the, uh, outside the law, uh, uh, outside the police, yeah. and, and let him do the work for you. Mm -hmm. But with a, with a good moral attitude, I mean, that's yep. the yeah. Oh, yeah. thing. Because, I mean, crime fiction is, uh, it's, it's not moralistic, of course not, but, but the, the moral, the, the good, the good white guys should win mm. yeah. in the end. That's yeah. pretty important, and, and the, uh, whether the good guy is a police officer or a yeah. private eye or, or anybody, yeah. it doesn't really matter, but, but the yeah. good guy is supposed to to find out who did it yeah. in the end. I think at the end of the day, if you look at it in a completely sort of sort of Greek theater model, yeah. it is a comedy because good things happen at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. It's not a tragedy yeah, yeah. where yeah. Uh, things go uh, bad. Maybe that's another good uh, reason for reading crime fiction because at the end there's a, some kind of satisfaction yeah. guaranteed. Or like Carl Hyacinth uh, once said, he lives in Florida and, in, and I think Florida is going down the drains according to him. But he wants his books to end good. Yeah. Uh, the good guys uh, uh, do get their rewards at the end of his book. This is not reality, but that's how it should but be. But I think crime fiction is one of the rare sort of genres in that sense, and mm. I mean genre in the kind of yeah. uh, loose sense, where it's actually cool for the good guys to win. Mm. Because normally you do get like, you, you tend to uh, sort of like the, sort of the bad guys mm. in other places. I'm reading a, um, I mean, I, I, I always like Raskolnikov, but the point is, you know, the, at the end of a book which he would have written, Raskolnikov would have been identified and jailed away, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, in the famous line by Raymond Chandler, down these mean streets a man must go who is not himself mean, who is <laughs> neither tarnished nor afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's wonderful. I mean, it's... Yeah. Uh, you, you could sort of yeah. put it on the, uh, as a motto on, yeah. on all kinds of crime fiction yeah. when it comes to that. No, and uh, I mean, coming back to law and you know the real world mm -hmm. and crime fiction. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of um, Hukan, I mean, have you seen a kind of a change in terms of uh, the readership is from the real world, um, but even from when you were only a reader and not a writer in uh, Sweden, um, uh, let's say from, uh, help me to pronounce the couple's name. Sure, sure well, well, uh, <laughs> yes. The problem with them is that nobody outside of Sweden and Norway could, could, could pronounce sure, well, well, absolutely sure. faultless names. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But they were good. I think the publishers yeah. would have told them to call themselves differently now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sure. Well, I think they changed everything. I mean. Uh, if it hadn't been for Shoval Valle, we wouldn't have Håkan writing the stories he does, uh, yeah. does now. You wouldn't have the development you've had in, in Danish, Norwegian, no, 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 Scandinavian, or yeah. for I that matter, Icelandic yeah. no, crime If fiction. you haven't read them, I mean, you should, yeah, because no, they were a couple. They, they, uh, they wrote the books from, from 1965 to 75. They were very political. Yeah. The, they were left-wing, of course, and they were, they were criticizing society. And, but everybody read them. Still, yeah. I mean, the right-wing people read them because they were so... The stories were so good, they yeah. were so funny, they were so well written. It's uh, so they they sort of they started sort of the new Scandinavian tradition for this is what crime fiction could be like, and, and yeah. they they still are our masters. I think. And, and, and also, I think they they were very at least they were very early uh, doing the, you know with uh, having their characters develop throughout right. the stories. Yeah. They get older, they get into different circumstances. Martin Beck is divorced. Uh, will you find new happiness? And this was before it became a kind of a, a convention. Convention. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually police soap opera, yeah. uh, but written before that. And uh, I, I, I remember thinking that what attracted the readers to Shovalvala was not just the stories or their political attitudes. I think they they actually uh, um, well, what is saved quite few people. Uh, but it, uh, the readers became so interested in Martin Beck's emotional and intestinal problems right. that mm -hmm. they would rush right. for the new book and see what's going on with the yep. poor chap. And of course, at the end, of there's eight uh, uh, out of ten he's shot, and he's actually dying when the book ends, and will he survive, and so on. Mm -hmm. But then, most crime writers will try sooner or later to kill off their characters. Yeah. It started yeah. with Conan Doyle. 
Ian Fleming almost did it. Gunnar Stolzen mm. has done it, and so on. That's He's the easy way to, to get rid of them, is just <laughs> yeah. to, 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 to kill them all. Yeah. I didn't do that with Van Witten, nor with Barbarossa. We are grateful for that. I almost did it, but yeah. he, uh, uh, he sort of survived. I, I, I like that. I like my heroes to survive. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, have you seen a kind of, uh, I'm talking about both um, in Sweden, in Scandinavia, and outside um, from two different uh, arenas, but have you seen a kind of a difference of readership in terms of their tastes over the years that you've written? Or it's not something that you've really... What I think is that it's, it's okay to, to, to read crime fiction in, in, in the Nordic countries these days. I mean, the, the status for, for crime fiction is very different in different countries. I mean, it's in, in the United Kingdom, it's been very highly regarded with P. P. D. James and from a Gothic Christian Dorothy Say. So they yeah. got reviews the first day that books are published in, in the prestigious papers, etc. Yeah. Whereas in other countries, crime fiction is something you shouldn't read. You should hide away your crime mm. yeah. story and pretend it's a good novel. Mm. But, but it's changing because if there is a, if there is, when, when you are asked the question, so what is the secret behind the, the, the Nordic crime boom? In my most optimistic moments, I think it's because the books are so good. Mm. Yeah. They, are, they are sincerely and well written, and yeah. we are closer to mainstream literature, yeah. really. And in some cases, you can't, you can't judge, and yeah. you, shouldn't, you no. shouldn't make the distinction. It's a good story. Yeah. Whether you call it a crime story or, or something yeah. else, it doesn't matter. Mm. I agree with that. And also, I think what's happened to, when I talk about the, the reading audience, um, but there was uh, uh, one thing that happened, yeah, I think it was 1994, five or thereabouts, Anne Holt, whom we mentioned yeah. earlier, she published a book called The Death of the Demon. That was her, thir her, her third novel. And it sold uh, more than 100,000 copies on its first appearance. It had never happened to a crime novel before. So I was thinking to myself, what's going on here? And I realized that she reached readers, perhaps predominantly female readers, who didn't read uh, detective stories or crime stories, uh, but they were attracted to this book. and so they became uh, uh, sort of an extended yeah. audience for the crime story. And uh, when I speak about, when I'm out somewhere to speak about crime fiction, about 70% of the audience are women. Yeah. So they are really into it. And then, of course, I, I wonder why uh, uh, crime fiction becomes increasingly more violent in our countries. Yeah. The murders get grislier all the time. Not so you mean there's a connection because they want to satisfy the, the, the minds of the people? <laughs> <leaders? Is that laughs> I, I don't know, uh -huh. but it, it has struck me uh, as a strange thing that if you look at female characters, female detective characters in, in crime fiction, uh, most of them don't have a mother. I see a yeah. sort of Freudian PhD coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I mean, yeah. from, from Nancy Drew and upwards, yeah female detectives, their mothers are gone, they are dead or they are away and they, they yeah. aren't around. So maybe... Maybe uh, that makes it understandable <laughs> for their incentive to right wrong things or yeah. at least get the bad guy. Yeah. 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 But then we're going into deeply sort of psychological mm. terrain mm. Uh, mm. rather than literally. Mm. Um, we open up for you. Yep. Before the PhD is coming, we can... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some questions, yeah, please. Hello. Uh, whether in real life or in your books, are there different kinds of crimes that occur during those long, dark winters in Scandinavia from during the sunny, long days in the summer? Well, I think it's a, a good thing is to plan the murder while it's dark and then commit it in sunshine. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, no. well, I can't think of that much difference. Maybe, uh, you know, the, the, the usual type of homicide happens more often during summer when people get drunk and, and get into fights. But I'm, I'm, I haven't really thought that. Well, I think in the, in, 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 in the, during the dark time, the murky time, as they say in, in, in northern Norway, people prefer to stay at home and keep warm and 
inside and maybe read detective stories. Yeah. So, and that keeps, I mean, the reading of crime stories keep people away from yeah. crime. So Hokan is actually sort of doing a social service yeah. by keeping <laughs> murderers oh, yeah. uh, away from crime and reading his books. Yeah. Of, yeah. Course, yeah. of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, there is someone there. Gentleman there who's been asking. Yeah. Hello. You spoke about this entire idea of stealing uh, ideas from various other books. I want to know if uh, I want to know if you also go in deep into this tradition of Scandinavia of economics and classical liberals and find a way to put them up in your books. Uh, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Right. If I understand your question correctly, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Many crime writers they uh, they tend to say that I use crime fiction as a as a model for criticizing society or, or, or whatever. Whereas I use crime fiction for, for telling a crime story, but I mean I'm I'm not a I don't try to describe society. Uh, I don't and I don't think there is a necessary correlation between the, the number of crime fiction books coming out in, in, in Sweden and the society. Of course, but you can't avoid it. Being a writer and try to write stories that are plausible, that are truthworthy, uh, society is there. But I don't delve deep into these economic or, or political structures, mm -hmm. no. Other writers do that, yeah. and very well. Henning Mantel does it, and, and Stieg Larsson did it, and etc. So, But we have, a, since you said 100, close to 200 books here, the variety is enormous. Mm -hmm. You find every every imaginable subgenre of, of the crime fiction in, in Scandinavian crime writing. And I and think I didn't answer your question, but I, yeah. I spoke for a while anyway. Yeah, well, Sorry. you talked about the classics. Well, that's uh, anyway, uh, what you see today is, of course, that uh, because a great many writers have a background coming from, from the press or the media, uh, they write about certain issues, yeah. say trafficking, uh, drug smuggling, uh, wife beating, uh, so kind of stories, kind of themes that come yeah. up in, in the news, and, and they cover this, uh, well, they write books about it, which is one way of discussing society. I think yeah. it's it works both ways as a story and as a, as a commentary. Um, it must be so difficult to think up new ways of killing people. I wondered if either of you have contact with the real police in uh, Sweden and in Norway and whether they ring you up and say, listen, I've got a really juicy murder <laughs> for you here. <laughs> and do they give you ideas or do they tell you what they think or are you completely independent? of any friends in the police force? Well, they don't need to give me methods. I asked them more about the investigation. How would you go about this case? But I mean, so far I've never asked. I, I, I haven't had the, 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 the need to ask for a way of, of killing people. There is a line, I think it's from, is it from, from Chandler? How could you kill her? It was easy. <laughs> so killing is, uh, <laughs> killing is not that complicated. I mean, uh, particularly if you have a weapon. But I mean, you, you can you can kill in so many complicated ways. So, so uh, to me, uh, I haven't even I never dealt on the question. And I know some police officers, but uh, but I, I ask them other questions than the method question. I think that goes for Norwegian uh, crime writers too. They 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 do use the police in their research because they had to get the details wrong right this time. Uh, yeah. uh, in the old days, you could have mysterious poisons from South America and that sort of thing. <laughs> but it's, uh, I mean, uh, the business of inventing new ways of killing people, that was much more a thing of the past when Dorothy L. Sayers used uh, uh, air bubble in the bloodstream or, or, or the, 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 the sound of nine yeah. uh, church bells yeah. and yeah. so on. And people really competed in discovering new ways of doing away with one another. But there is a YouTube cl uh, clip uh, which is 100 ways of killing yourself. Okay. You <laughs> check. Uh, ah. So ah. why would you need 100 different ways of killing yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's creative. Uh, in uh, case, in case it doesn't work, you go for number 17 and then, yeah. It's okay. about aesthetics. <laughs> okay, yeah. sorry. Nothing beats the old blunt instrument. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah. Have a, yeah, sorry. Uh, could you talk about the Nordic view of self-censorship in terms of themes and things you tackle in your books. 
in India, people are very aware of self-censorship, that we shouldn't upset other people in other communities. But in France, as they see, there's a strong feeling that one has the right to be provocative. Mm -hmm. So could you talk about that? What is the Nordic view? Is there such a thing as a Nordic view? In that case, Nils will explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, um, I, I, I don't feel that was, there used to be a kind of, you know, not open, but um, understood that you don't write about crimes against children. Uh, even before that, you didn't write about sex crimes. Murder had to be committed for, you know, love, hate, uh, greed, things like that. Which the, 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 nasty, the more nasty perspectives of, of the human uh, psyche uh, were not very much touched upon. But these days, um, I think any subject is open for a, a crime novel. Uh, but then, of course, there are, um, there are, uh, in, in a way, I suppose, some, there is a certain kind of self-censorship in the, in the sense that you don't want to rip society apart. You don't. You want to improve race relations uh, and everything, and so um, maybe there's a kind of keeping back. Yeah. It took quite some time before crime writers in Norway wrote about, about Pakistani organized uh, uh, crime, which we do have. Uh, and not only that, we have well, people from Africa, from other European countries, uh, and it was kind of thing you didn't really want to touch upon because, well, but I, I think now, no. Uh, but I think it's a sort of a organic evolutionary process about yeah. where the borders are, uh, yeah. no-go areas in writing. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if I may, uh, I mean, the Indian context, I would say that, you know, there is provocative writing which is out there, except that it's not just popular. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, whether it's in certain sort of non-English languages, uh, I've read that, and, and um, I'm trying to get banned myself, but it's not working yet, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's always good for a book to be banned, I suppose. Yeah, it yeah. Creates interest. Sure. Yeah. 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 Hi, hmm. here. Yes. Yeah. So, um, as readers, we all have our favorite books in which we have some particular characters which we identify with. So, as a writer, out of all the characters that you've created, is there any particular character that you identify with yourself? And, and I have another question, just one more question, and that is that, you know, we say that writing is a journey of discovery. So what has been your greatest discovery so far in your journey? Those are my two questions. Good and complicated questions. I think I, uh, I to a certain extent, I, I identify with a number of my, my, my characters because it's the, I'm not that keen on the black and white way of thinking because it's the, if you write a murder story, you should at least be able to understand why the motive, the question why is more important than who did it. Mm. So the motives behind these uh, bad deeds are, and that means that you have to be able to identify at least a little with even the, 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 the murderer. So, uh, and also because we, we share the same psychology. You should not demonize the, 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 the bad guys. I mean, because there is a little bit of, of, of them in me as well. So, so uh, in that sense, I identify, I mean, hopefully less with the murderers than the police officers, but still, I, I, I need to be able to understand their, their psychology, and understanding somebody else's psychology, that is identifying, I think. So, you see what I mean? No, I Roughly, yeah. I can't hear you. No, I mean she's asking, uh, who do you, I think, uh, who do you identify with, the murderers or the victims? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the victim. I mean, you, 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 you must always write from, from the weaker, the, the people who are in a bad position. If, if, if you're a, somebody being beaten up, so uh, I don't identify with the murderers in that sense. But I mean, I can understand why they, and in, in one book, for instance, a woman with a birthmark, which is number four in the series with Van Vitter, and you identify certainly there is a woman, she is trying to kill four men of, for a good reason. And I know that, particularly the female readers, you identify with her, and you hope that, I hope she's gonna get number three and four as well. Mm. I mean, I know this because yeah. I've talked to so many readers, so. And I, as a reader, also sympathize with her, of yeah. course. As you, uh, against your will, find yourself sympathizing with, say, the Tom Ripley character in yeah. uh, Patricia Highsmith's books, sure. because 
Ach, well, he, he sort of charms you into his uh, amoral world, and uh, you want want him in a strange way to succeed. You want Anthony Perkins to get away with murder in Psycho. <laughs> you know, he's watching his w uh, 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 drying up, cleaning up after the murder. And, and, uh, I think, I mean, that's the major point we've made. I mean, in terms of we tend to think of victims as part of society, but the perpetrators are also part of society. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not that they're coming from Mars or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes? Oh, uh, why a lot of the main characters in a lot of crime fiction, particularly in Scandinavia, whether it's Martin Beck or Wallen or Blomqvist, why are they so deeply flawed? You know, most of them are very deeply flawed characters. Uh -huh. they've, they've had divorces, they've had uh -huh. bad relationships, they drink. Is it to do with the weather or is it something else that authors <laughs> think about? <laughs> Yeah, it's pure yeah. Montesquieu. It's because yeah. of the bad weather. That's what. Th that's the way we are. And yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a cliche. But I think also that you, if you work as a police officer for 30 years and you see yeah. the dark, I mean, these mean streets all the time, you 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 you, you meet a hundred murders. You get depressed and yeah. you need a drink, and then you need another one, and then you're you have a problem. Mm. So I mean, this is uh, it's easier to write about these shady characters. I think. Mm. I mean. Can you imagine a, a detective being happy all the time? And, and <laughs> ram, pam, pam. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. This is a, this is a dark genre, and the, the yeah. characters that have to be to be like that. Yeah. I'm Scandin sorry. Yeah, Scandinavians are natural sufferers, uh, yeah. but also I mean, good a, a flawed character is more interesting uh, because it's always the dra there's also the drama of his own life. I mean, Harry Hule in in, uh, in Nesbitt's novels, he's constantly you know deeper and deeper into it and he loses bits and pieces of his body for every new book so I'm, I'm wondering uh, how much <laughs> is left of him uh, at the end there <laughs> but it's uh, simply if, <coughs> if you're not if you are not a superhero you have you are in, into trouble when you move into dangerous grounds that makes the story more exciting yeah. the and the character more interesting to write about can we can we take one last question, one last question. yeah um, over there in the corner, I think the lady over there. Very simple question: How do you spell Shovalvade? Ah, <laughs> I asked you the so same question. I can Google it. Uh, we could. Uh, I think I should write it. Shovalvade. You can. Uh, you spell it S J O with two dots. W H W A H L. Start with that, and that's fine. Yeah. Because, again, we do it afterwards. You come to me. And I'll, I'll, I'll show this to you <laughs> la la later on. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Spelling is okay, but pronouncing is worse. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Okan. Thank you. Thank you, Niels. Thank you, Indra. Thank you, Thank you, Hakan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It everyone. was very, very interesting session. And we have the book signing there. The books are there. Buy the books. Read the books.